So looking at the themes screen, uh, this is where we can switch between themes and customize. And before I look at that extensively, let me make a note here, a little advice regarding themes. So regarding themes, activate one and keep one on standby. Now we've got we've got in my case I think I've got four here. The original three that came with WordPress and one that I just activated. So that's too many. I want to have one and one backup. Usually 2017. 2015, 16, 17, etc. These are the official ones from the official WordPress company. These other ones are coming from other companies. You can see under the theme details. This is coming by CSS Igniter. They designed that theme and other themes. 2017 comes from the WordPress theme. It's an official theme. So I recommend only having your main design and a backup design. The point of a backup is sometimes there's problems. Sometimes you might get hacked, and the hacked code exists in the theme. So simply switching the hacked theme to an unhacked <coughs> theme fixes your site. And then you can delete a theme. And if you hover and click on a theme, there's a delete button. So various reasons for this then. Activate one and keep one on standby. If you get hacked, you can often switch to the clean theme to fix the hack. Now, often, not always. That's one way. So switching between themes. Yes, you'll lose the design, but your site won't be hacked anymore. It won't be stealing credit card numbers anymore. And that's a that, that's a good thing, of course. So keeping one backup. The reason you only want two is because each theme takes up resources. Later on we'll have a discussion about updates. Just like my phone gets updates every once in a while that says click here to get new features. Your iPhone every once in a while updates and tells you your Samsung, etc. All our phones tell us that. My Windows computer every, every once in a while has to restart because of updates. My Mac has to get updates. All software computers get updates. Uh, WordPress is software as well, and it requires updates. Actually, at the moment, this is saying there's one update waiting. Question? How do you know when you get that? Thing. It might be visual. I might see that like something's weird that suddenly ads of some other company are appearing. Maybe the site is very slow. Maybe it's behaving odd. So it's not very obvious? It depends. I've seen it on some clients that it is obvious, and on others it's much more difficult. But if I have, for example, Google Webmaster Tools set up or, Wi or Bing Webmaster Tools, those things can scan my site and also tell me your site is hacked. So sometimes it's visual and sometimes it's not. So you can check it from time to time to see yeah. yeah. Google and Bing can help you with that. So regarding resources, these take up space on the server. Right now I'm using WAMP, which is on the hard drive of this computer. But if I were uploading it to something real like uh, HostGator, I'm going to buy you know one gigabyte of space. And if I have seven themes that are not doing anything, they're they're doing something. They're taking up space on the server. They're also taking up resources in that these give me updates once in a while too. There's one update waiting for something. But these themes might also get updated. Like right now, 2017 is in version 1.2. Most likely, 1.3 will get released at some point to give me new features or to fix bugs or whatever. I'm looking at the older one, 2015, and it's on 1.7. There have been seven versions of it. So even if I'm not using a theme, it's going to check back to the WordPress mothership, back to WordPress.org, and check, is there a new version? Every month or week or some amount of time, I don't know how often. But every theme, every plugin, every widget, etc., is going to check back to WordPress.org once in a while and check, is there a new version? Is there a new version? Is there a new version? And it's using up resources. It's using up your bandwidth. 
your connection from your server back to .org. So these are the big reasons why I would recommend just having two themes to switch between themes if necessary and to minimize resources. So what should we do here? Unfortunately, it's not as useful as that could be. Like, if I do look and I this has no ratings yet, right. um, I think under popular you can see some. It would be nice if you could see more detail, but you really can't. You just see this yeah. has got six. So not really why it's so low. It, it may be because it's old and rickety and it did get hacked, or it may be that the features are not good. We can't really tell here. We can tell with plugins, but we can't really tell here. Yes. How can we uh, check different languages on our website? Languages is going to be something that needs to get set up under, I think, under settings and reading, and also with a plugin. We can have a multilingual plugin. So we can uh, put our website in two or three languages? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with a multilingual plugin. We plugins. Yes, we haven't talked about plugins yet, but it's going to be under plugins. In our case here, okay, we want to delete some themes. We don't need some of these. So uh, click on 2015. To, to view the details, and then we see right here, delete. So let's delete some things that we don't need. I'll keep the, the, the Brittany theme, let's say, if you chose that one, and then also the 2017 theme. This is going to tell you you're about to delete it, and if you had customization, you're going to lose that. Well, I haven't customized 2015. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to use it. And then also 2016. You might have 2016 active. Choose another to activate first, and then you can delete. Right. All right, so let's do this for a moment to give you practice. <clears throat> Go to Add New and add a theme or so, and then uh, customize. You explore a theme. You can stick with 2017 if you want, but customize. Any theme that you like, click Customize, and then explore some of these things. They're different for everyone, so I can't say, okay, now click on this, this, and that. You check it out for a moment. You can also look at here. How does the design look on a desktop computer or laptop? How does the design look on a tablet? And how does the design look on a phone? So it's going to look like that. Tall and thin, very simple. You can preview it in different devices. Let's browse that a moment. Some of these might not make sense. That's OK. Just browse them a moment. Yeah, uh, 
years now, I've almost had this starting to get a chance. People are putting in response to things on the online everyone so the last thing that we will do is we've done some things today re regarding posts and categories and now design so we're going to go together through the process again of backing up the site I want to archive the site to take it home with me so when we come back on Thursday I continue from this point we're gonna get that practice so I'm gonna do again that I'm gonna back up the site I'm gonna put it in the network folder if you want a copy of my work if you worked on it yourself and changed it yourself, you want to save what we're about to create. I'm going to get this again from my handout number four. My handout number four, earlier today, we did the part that was resurrect your site. 
Well, we're going to back up again and do the archive your site. We don't need to download the duplicator plugin again. It was installed last time. We have a new menu item called duplicator. So we'll go to duplicator, we'll start a new archive, and we'll follow a few steps. So I'm going to go back to my site. Let's go to the duplicator. Click on duplicator. Duplicator packages. We don't have any backups at the moment, or we deleted it earlier when we brought the site back. So this is normal. We're going to create a new package. Let's go to Duplicator Packages, Create New. One thing that we skipped last time is we can add notes. If you notice a little note button on the right side, we can give ourselves a note here. No one sees us except ourselves. When we resurrect the site, we'll have multiple copies of a site, perhaps, multiple backups. So if we give ourselves a note, we can tell ourselves what's in the, what's in the site archive. The reason I like to use this is to give myself notes about what I've done on the site and maybe what's pending. So the date is there, I guess it's still one day ahead or, or something. So you can change that if you want, but it doesn't matter if you change this number. This is just a backup at the moment. And I'm going to write uh, added categories and tags, changed the theme, pending, will be um, adding plugins. This is optional, but you can add notes to your archive. This other these other options, you can ignore them. The defaults are just fine. You can change that name if you want, but I like to leave it alone because it has the date. So I have a copy from last week on the 4th, and I have a copy from today. So they're going to be in that order, numeric order. Notes. Let's click Next. This screen, which we also passed by quickly previously, is a scan of the site, a scan of the server and, and, the, and the site. Everything about the server, in this case, WAMP, is good. The size of the site is good. Right now it's got up to 24 megabytes. It might have been like 15 or something last time. The database is about one megabyte. It got a little bit larger because we added another theme. We did this and that. We added posts. So the site has changed a little bit. If you get any warnings or errors, you'll get instructions on possible fixes. Hopefully no one got any warnings or errors, but if you did, I'll check you in a moment. Possible warnings and errors are when you have a very large site, once you start to get over 100 megabytes, it starts to warn you sometimes. And it says backing up your site might be slow. So I might want to do this backup on off-peak hours, not in the middle of the day when everyone's coming to visit my site. If my backup is going to be slow, I should do it at 10 p.m. I should do it at you know 9, 14 p.m. instead of in the middle of the day. But the size of the file really is connected to how it's going to perform during the day or just for the, for the moment? For the moment, it's for the duplicator. The size of the site is it matters right now because we're going to make a copy of the site and it has to get all of the pieces of your site to compress it. So it matters most right now. I don't have any issues here, so I'll click Build. This is keep this window open during the build process. This may take several seconds. It took a whole five seconds for me. It may take more or less for you. Usually it's going to be slower on a real server because it's on the internet. And as I add more pictures and text and all of that to the site, it'll probably slow it down also. According to my handout, I get an installer file. This is another instructions to bring the site back. And I get a new archive with a new date and you know unique identifier gibberish. So this is a new copy of the site. I'm going to click the installer to, to download. Either it'll just download right away or it'll ask you. You do want to say save. Then I'm going to click the archive that will also download. These downloaded to the desktop. <clears throat> to find the easiest, you can you can click on the little folder to take it directly to the desktop. 
So on my desktop, it put the zip file and this installer PHP. Again, you don't want to double click this, it has nothing you want to look at. You don't want to unzip this, the installer will unzip it like it did for us earlier today. So those are the two files I need. I like to, and I have it on my handout, I like to create a folder with today's date and put both of these into the folder and that's my backup. That's what I'll put onto my flash drive to take with me. And that's what I'm going to put at the end of the day every time my copy of my site. 0509. So into the network folder, if you want a copy of my site that I worked on right now, I'm putting it in there. When we come back on Thursday, we have the one from last week and we have the one from today. So when we come back next time to bring the site back to life again, we have to resurrect it every time. Eventually, we're going to set the database and we're going to go to localhost slash 2017.0509 slash installer. Today, we're under local localhost slash 2504, 2017.504, today's date, or last week's date. When we come back next time, it's going to have today's date. So that is going to change every time. That's why my handout, you know, my handout says something from a year ago. I'm not updating it every time, every, every time. I don't have to. You logically figure that out. What's the name of the folder in the WW folder? Localhost X installer. That's it for the moment. You want to do this backup, you want to copy it to your flash drive. If you need a little help to finish this final step, call me over. I'll be with you one moment. Um, that's it for the moment.